The movie begins with Hee-won, who's her typical bank employee from Seoul. She is driving back home from work while listening to a radio podcast. The speaker talks about a trip where he happened to eat clovers. As she is immersed in the talk show, suddenly there is a commotion on the side of the road. She sees two men abusing a woman out in the open. The brutal assailants pay no heed to the onlookers and keep trashing the poor girl. The woman stumbles away from them and asks people for help, but nobody extends a helping hand. The woman stumbles her way into Hee-won's car and asks for help, but she merely closes the side window, shutting out her pleas for help. The next day, we see Hee-won at work. An old lady, looking rather frail and broke, has come to ask for a loan, but she refuses to grant her the loan. She's pretty serious and competitive at work, which makes her somewhat indifferent to the struggles of others. The poor old lady begs and cries but her pleas fall on deaf ears. Soon Hee-won gets a call and after sighing with annoyance, decides to step out for a moment. She asks her coworker to make an excuse for her in case the manager asks and leaves the bank. As she drives off, she gets another call. She picks it up and talks to what sounds like a woman on the other side. He one snaps at her, but the other woman talks sweetly, asking her to come visit. She cuts the call short and arrives at a police station. It turns out that the woman who asked for her help the other night has passed away, and she witnessed the horrifying incident. The police officers bring her face to face with the assailants but surprisingly, he one decides to keep quiet about the wrongdoer's identity, believing it's not her concern. The first thing she asks after seeing the criminals is if they can see her. The officers tell her that the glass is one way see-through so only they can see the culprit. The woman clearly remembers that these were the guys but she does not wish to proceed with filing her statement. After saying that she did not get a clear look at their faces, she leaves the station. She also tells the officers not to contact her anymore. As she is leaving, the criminals are also set free due to lack of evidence. She then sees the deceased girl's father trying to attack the criminals, who fight back. Thankfully the police intervene on time. She quickly settles in her car and is about to leave, but the poor grieving man comes to her and begs her to help him get justice, but the police officers take him away. Now, left all alone with the culprits, her heart starts to race and just as she is about to flee, one of the men comes over and gives her a stern warning not to open her mouth. Even when the culprit tries to harass her, she decides to leave quietly. After coming back from the station, she sees the old woman happily thanking her co-worker. Turns out that she has resolved her loan issue. He one gets angry and thinks that the other woman used some underhanded methods to get the woman's loan approved. She drags her colleague away and bitterly warns her not to go down the wrong path. Later, while she is in the restroom, she feels a little guilty about snapping at the woman and decides to text her so that they can make up. She sends the message and sees someone enter and leave the washroom. Moments later, things go from bad to worse when she finds herself trapped in the restroom. She pushes the door but it seems someone locked it from the outside. After a bitter struggle, she manages to break out of the washroom. Once outside, she sees the same slippers that she saw in the restroom, worn by her colleague. Once again, assuming that she was the one who locked her inside out of spite, he one slaps her colleague in front of everyone. The entire hall turns silent and the angry woman turns around to see the old janitor, wearing the same slippers as her colleague. Turns out the earlier incident was due to the janitor's unfortunate mistake. Alas, she realizes her error a bit too late. These unfortunate events lead to her boss handing her the pink slip. Drained after struggling the entire day, the woman goes back home. As she is about to settle in, she hears someone knock on the door. It turns out to be the apartment superintendent, who is here to hand her the mails that have been piling in. She does not seem so interested in them, and after grabbing the letters, quickly closes the door. In the midst of all this chaos, he one takes up a friend's offer to escape it all and heads to Muto, a remote and somewhat old-fashioned island in the south. It's a place where her grandfather used to live and she visited in her childhood. It might just be the fresh start that this apathetic woman needs. As the boat nears the island, we see a woman standing there, waiting for he ones arrival. The woman is named Baknam. They used to be close friends back in their teenage years, but he one had been ignoring Baknam's letters for quite some time. Turns out the letters that littered her mailbox were all from Baknam. The woman enthusiastically welcomes her old friend and leads the way into the island. As they make their way in, they come across the very few residents of the island. The people quickly gather around the new guest and watch her like jackdaws attracted by a new shiny thing. They soon find out that she is the granddaughter of a prior island resident who passed away and greet her enthusiastically. Baknam soon introduces the two passive-looking men standing on the side as Man Jong, her husband, and Chol Jong, her brother-in-law. Hearing this, the old woman, who happens to be Baknam's mother-in-law, scolds her saying that she should not call the men so casually by their names. The old woman looks bitterly towards the newcomer and asks when she would be leaving. Chill granny, she barely stepped foot on this island. After scolding the other women for wasting time, the old woman orders them to get back to work. Baknam takes he one to her house. The latter sees it to be clean, despite not being in use for so many years and delightfully discovers that her friend actually cleaned it for her. On the way to her house, she notices the old man of the village and Chul Jong eating some leaves. She probably remembers the podcast man's story about eating clovers. Life on this undeveloped, somewhat backward island is far from easy. Baknam's existence is nothing short of a living nightmare, as she's treated like a virtual slave by her abusive husband, Man Jong, his lecherous brother, and the unfriendly local women. 
Bok Nam's love and devotion are all reserved for her young daughter, Yeon Hee. As they settle down in the front yard of Hee Won's house, Yeon Hee arrives. Her mother invites her in to come and say hi to her aunt, but the girl runs away from there. After talking for a while, Bok Nam leaves to go and bring some food for her friend. When she is back, she finds her friend fast asleep. The woman goes back to her house where they have dinner. While eating, Man Jong mentions that he would go night fishing with her excited daughter. The mother is far from excited though. She mentions how they come back empty-handed every time. This causes Man Jong to snap at her. Shul Jong, however, keeps his greedy eyes on his sister-in-law. As soon as they leave, his brother sneaks into the room and takes advantage of the poor submissive woman. When the father and daughter return, the weary woman braces herself to greet them, showing signs of exhaustion. She complains ever so slightly, and in a fit of anger, the man kicks her in the face. He threatens to silence her forever if she dares speak ill of his brother again. Bok Nam, without uttering another word, simply suffers in silence. Poor woman. The next day, after having breakfast, we see the two men working on a roof and everyone praising them for their strength. These fools seem almost unaware of the woman behind them, doing as much manual labor as the men, although I think it's more than them. As they talk, Bok Nam's mother-in-law asks about Hee Won. Bok Nam says that she must be tired, so she is sleeping in. The old woman does not miss the chance to mock the girl. When Bok Nam tries to defend her friend, the old woman snaps at her, forcing her to keep quiet. Later, Bok Nam takes some food for her friend. While she eats, Bok Nam invites her to go and wash up at the pond together. She reminisces about how they used to go there together when they were little. He won is a bit reluctant at first, but after making sure that nobody would spy on them, she agrees. Her friend takes her clothes and asks her to get ready when she is back after doing the laundry. Bok Nam does the laundry and looks longingly at the pretty clothes that her friend owns. The white dress seems too pure and out of reach for her lifestyle. In her reverie, she misses one shocking revelation. Her daughter's underpants seem to be peeking out from her husband's pocket. Later, the two ladies go to wash up in the pond and have a light moment of joy. The next day, he one wanders out to check the area. She reaches the place where the telephone base is and looks out at the waters below. The people on this island are almost isolated from civilization. The only phone at this place is at Bok Nam's house. That too is a little too guarded. The woman walks into a field. She sees a clover and out of curiosity puts it in her mouth to taste. While she is at it, she hears rustling noises from behind, so she grabs a glass shard nearby. Getting up, she sees Chul Jong standing behind her. The man hands her a leaf, and she warily takes it. He motions for her to try it, and the woman immediately regrets doing so, spitting it out after. Suddenly, Yeon Hee arrives at the scene and Chul Jong leaves, thankfully. The duo spends the day together, playing around on the island. The little Yeon Hee throws remarks about her desire to grow up into a young woman like her. Back on the other side, Man Jong returns home with an unfamiliar woman in his arms, disappearing into his room. Soon, the room echoes with the intimate sounds of their encounter. In the midst of this unsettling scene, Bok Nam's friend arrives with her daughter. In a protective rush, Bok Nam shields her daughter's ears and urgently asks he one to take her away, shielding her innocent ears from the sordid sounds. Bok Nam returns and remains unfazed, choosing to bury her head in her meal, seemingly accustomed to this distressing routine. Her mother-in-law's irritation grows as she observes Bok Nam's indifference. She taunts her, marveling at how she can continue eating in the midst of such a disturbing situation. Bok Nam remains silent, clearly showing that this is sadly nothing new to her. After a while, the couple in the room finish their activities, and the woman emerges, sitting in the doorway as she fixes her makeup. Right that moment, Yeon Hee arrives and leers at the woman. Moments later, she runs inside the room after hitting the woman on her head. Bok Nam, still not uttering a word, appears disheveled with tanned skin, fully absorbed in her chores. Unable to bear the silence any longer, the woman apologizes and hands Bok Nam a bottle of skin cream. She advises Bok Nam to escape from a man like this as soon as possible. The woman turns out to be a and reveals that her boss compelled her to be here due to the double payment offered by the man. Bok Nam finally reacts saying that if running away is that easy, she wouldn't be living like this. The woman merely laughs it off and offers to run away to Seoul together. Bok Nam, however, turns it down. She says that a child needs her father to grow up well. Later, while Bok Nam is busy assorting the beehive, her husband gets irritated and throws a stone at her. The stone hits the bees, making them restless. Poor Bok Nam experiences a torturous attack. After running away from the torturous stinging bees, the woman arrives home, where the husband tortures her once more. After throwing a plank at her, he drops bean paste before her, saying that it will heal the sting. What a despicable being. On an island where men have the upper hand, Bok Nam is forced to endure these relentless attacks. Afterwards, Bok Nam visits Hee Won, who tells her to stand up for herself. After spending some time with her friend, she comes back and decides to put away the laundry. As she is tidying up her clothes, she notices something in her husband's trouser pocket and her heart sinks. It turns out to be her daughter's underwear. A gnawing sense of foreboding washes over her. She rushes into the room, only to find her daughter seated before the mirror, mimicking the woman from the previous day by applying makeup. Without hesitation, Bok Nam intervenes, swiftly putting a stop to her daughter's actions. She urgently warns her not to come near her father. Just then, her husband abruptly returns home. 
He cruelly kicks Bok Nam to the ground and encircles their daughter, touching her inappropriately. The woman emerges from the room consumed by a vengeful rage. She reaches for a scythe, fueled by the desire for revenge against the man. However, when she glimpses her daughter nestled in his embrace, Bok Nam reluctantly releases her grip on the weapon. She is resolute in her determination to rescue her daughter from this dreadful situation. Bok Nam realizes that the only person who can help her is he one. She confides in her friend, revealing the disturbing truth. Her husband has developed an inappropriate and shameful liking towards their daughter. He one, however, refuses to believe her. Much to their bad luck, a woman overhears them talking. The next day, while spending time with Yonhee, he one tries to pry the truth out of her. Just as she is about to speak, the old devil arrives. She takes away the little girl forcefully and tells he one that the little girl is not Man Zhang's own flesh, as if that makes the sin any less horrible. She tells the young woman that if she is so sure about the crime, she may go and report it on her own. Back at home, after her husband falls into a deep slumber, Bok Nam acts discreetly. She quietly collects the money and dials a number. It is the woman who had slept with her husband just a few days ago. She tells her that she wants to take up her offer on running away together. The next morning, while her husband is seemingly asleep, Bok Nam hastily flees with her daughter clinging to her back. Along the way, her daughter laments how much she likes her father and expresses reluctance to leave him. But deep down, she understands that the only way to avoid seeing her mother suffer is to stay far away from her so-called father. Despite her own relief that her daughter's compassionate nature remains intact, Bok Nam can't help but worry. She fears that if they continue down this path, her daughter might eventually become a mirror image of herself, losing all the will to fight back. Mother and daughter quicken their pace and finally reach the shore. To their ecstasy, the woman has delivered on her promise, the boat is waiting. However, what Bok Nam never expected is that the boatman turns out to be a close friend of her husband. Tragedy strikes when her husband is summoned, and he beats the shit out of her. The poor woman is dragged back into the island and is subjected to violence, under the watchful eyes of every single person on the island. Her daughter tries to help and is pushed away by Man Zhang. The woman tries fighting back but is stopped by a woman who tells her it is wrong to throw stones at her husband. What a joke. The woman freaks out and curses the man who let her get used by every single man on the island like a plaything. Man Zhang comes at her threateningly and Yon He tries to stop him. The man pushes the little girl away and she hits her head on a rock. The poor little girl passes away while trying to protect her mother from Man Zhang's cruelty. What's more laughable is this trash who tells Bok Nam to keep quiet as if she would be alright with a little bean paste. Later, an officer is summoned to report the incident and they all concoct a lie that she fell and passed away. As the officer is interrogated, he one also arrives at the scene and upon being questioned, replies that she didn't see anything since she was sleeping. The officer is initially suspicious, but eventually lets it go and believes in their lies. They see him off after showering him with gifts. As the ship is leaving, he one also runs after it with her bags, trying to hitch a ride, but she is unable to catch up. Later that day, Chul Jong brings her soup, one that he made using leaves. The woman thinks that Bok Nam sent it and tells him to relay her thanks. He one remains passive and uninvolved in Bok Nam's ordeal. That night, while she is passed away after drinking the concoction, Chul Jong arrives to take advantage of her. Lucky for her, Bok Nam arrives in time and saves the unconscious woman. In a chilling flashback, we discover that He one and Bok Nam had a shared past. He one had been teaching Bok Nam how to play a tune on her flute when they were both subjected to harassment by four local boys from the island. That time, He one had decided to flee, leaving the defenseless Bok Nam alone to fight back. Later when she had come back, she had witnessed those same boys assaulting an unconscious Bok Nam. Despite witnessing the outrageous scene, she had refused to come and help. The irony of the present situation is that the tables have been turned. Now the unconscious one is He one, but unlike her, Bok Nam does not desert her. Instead, the woman is there to help her. The next day, the grieving woman builds a grave for her daughter. The men leave to sell their honey, and only women are left on the island to work on the field. The pressure builds and Bok Nam slowly reaches her breaking point. She works herself to exhaustion that afternoon and finally goes mad. Armed with a sickle, she takes matters into her own hands, exacting a terrible revenge. These terrible people must pay for their crimes. Three of the unkind elderly women in the village meet their end at her hands. Her evil mother-in-law sees the scene and runs for her life. The next morning, he one wakes up to find no reception on the island. She goes out in search of a signal, only to find the telephone wires cut off. There, she comes across Bok Nam's extremely terrified and crazy-looking mother-in-law. The woman is panicking. She only manages to utter out how she needs a man for such situations, and that she would be fine if only the men would come back. Right that moment, Bok Nam creeps up on them and slaps He one who falls down unconscious. In a desperate chase, Bok Nam corners her mother-in-law near a cliff. However, the old woman's poor eyesight causes her to misjudge the distance. She swings her sickle blindly until the blade detaches from its handle, causing her to fall down the cliff. Just as Man Zhang and his brother return on a boat, the old woman quickly gets ecstatic. In a moment of pure relief, she boasts about her swimming abilities and attempts to leap into the sea to flee the mad grieving mother's rage. Tragically, her failing eyesight betrays her again, leading her to land on the rocks below, fatally ending her life. Good riddance. The men soon land on the island, 
Bok Nam finds Chul Jung alone in a corner and approaches him. This lecherous man tries to harass the woman again, unaware of the crazy state she is in. The woman takes a deep breath and attacks the pervert with her weapon. With her brother-in-law's decapitation, Bok Nam's fury knows no bounds. A horrified he one witnesses this scene and runs, fearing for her life. Bok Nam follows and reaches the two other men, but before her onslaught, he one screams at the men, alerting them of her threat. Nevertheless, she attacks them with the sickle, injuring the boatman's arm. Van Zhang, however, subdues the enraged woman and takes her home. He ties up her hands and hits the woman again and again, while asking her why she didn't just take Bok Nam threatens him, promising to tell the police everything he did to her, once she gets arrested. In this instance, the man decides to take her life. As he is about to attack Bok Nam with a knife, he one finally shakes off her apathy. She shields her childhood friend and threatens to call the police on the man. Man Zhang's madness takes over, and he utters a chilling ultimatum. He would either take out He Won and blame it on Bok Nam or make her his wife. In a desperate ploy to disarm her husband, Bok Nam attempts to seduce Man Zhang by provocatively licking his knife. It momentarily lowers his guard, and Bok Nam seizes the opportunity to sink her teeth into his finger, causing him to strike her aside and reach for his axe. Bok Nam snatches the knife with her mouth and plunges it into the man's abdomen, causing a fatal wound. Man Zhang fights for his life but Bok Nam ruthlessly finishes him off, slashing him to his demise. Nothing compares to the fury of a mother who had just lost her child. In a final act of pure hatred, she smears his lifeless body with the bean paste that he loves so much, mocking his earlier comment about using it to heal wounds. Terrified by the gruesome spectacle, he one races to escape on the boat. Bok Nam, now finished with her husband, catches up. She is mercilessly driven by her relentless pursuit of justice. The boatman frantically tries to unfasten the ship, but it's too late. Bok Nam catches him. The two struggle on the water. In her frantic attempt to flee, He one unintentionally ensnares the boat driver in the propeller, tearing him apart. Finally free, He one flees to the mainland, leaving behind the nightmarish island and the horrors she witnessed. Back at the island, Bok Nam's quest for vengeance takes her to Seoul, clutching the flute that holds the echoes of their shared childhood memory. She's determined to make He one pay for her callous indifference and refusal to aid her or her daughter in their time of need. Meanwhile, He one is passed out in the police station and the officers are starting to investigate the tragedy that happened on the island. As the pieces of this chilling puzzle fall into place, it's revealed that he one had witnessed Yeon hees murder all along, but had deceived the investigator with a false statement, claiming she was asleep. He one gasps awake from her sleep and finds Bok Nam standing near. Terrified, the woman runs out to find the police officer passed out due to injury. Bok Nam comes after her to attack. After a fierce struggle, he one gets inside a cell and locks it, temporarily saved from the threat. Bok Nam soon finds the keys to the cell, but does not attack the woman immediately. Instead, she hands the repaired flute to her and asks her to play it. Slowly, as she is opening the cell, the police officer intervenes, firing multiple shots at Bok Nam. Undeterred, Bok Nam retaliates with a deadly sledgehammer, silencing her assailant for good. Bok Nam drags her injured body inside the cell. When she nears He Won, the latter takes desperate measures. She wields the broken flute as a weapon, striking Bok Nam with it. Moments away from her demise, Bok Nam still drags her body and puts her head on He Won's lap. In her last moments, Bok Nam succumbs to her injuries in her cold-hearted friend's embrace. Back on the desolate island, the victims of Bok Nam's vengeance have all been laid to rest, their remains consigned to the flames. The last remaining alive old man also passes away. The once-inhabited land now stands barren of human life. Haunted by guilt and traumatized by the horrors she experienced, he one finally comprehends the devastating consequences of her apathy. In a desperate attempt to find redemption, she bravely steps forward, revealing the identities of the culprits involved in the assault she had witnessed and refused to report. The movie ends on a sad note. We see the changed He one who, with a heavy heart, retrieves Bok Nam's discarded letters. She reads each one with remorse and regret. It's a painful realization that she could have made a difference, but she let the opportunities slip through her fingers. Her lonely and sinful self represents the very island that she just came back from.